Hey, what's up you guys? It's Tobin. Long time no anything. I've been just, there's so much going on right now. Uh, we've, uh, family's moved to a new house. Uh, I'm on a new distro of Linux. This is Manjaro Linux based on Arch, which I love. Lots and lots of things going on. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how to take the current development version of the quality of life dashboard and customize it for your location or area of interest. Uh, a number of people have taken the first version of the dashboard and did it for the area. Durham just did a really good job uh, standing up uh, a site of their own. Uh, I really, uh, every time someone does that, I feel like I need to apologize to them because the old system was really hard to customize for your location. And the way I re-architect it for the next version, it will be really easy to customize for your location. We're going to go over exactly how to do that. Now, one thing I did, uh, oh, uh, er, ah, one thing I did was, if you go to the dev branch in the dashboard, you'll see now there's this gigantic bunch of documentation, um, at least for yeah, you know, usually you pull up my site and you see a sentence that goes, stuff coming here soon, and then it never does. So this is a lot of documentation for me. And one of the things I'm going to do when I go over this is kind of debug the documentation as I go and make sure it's all good and what it needs to be. So let's get started. First thing, it gives you some, you know, blah, blah, blah. Project layout. It's fairly straightforward. There are really only two folders to to concern yourself with there's assets and uh let me pull this up in a file browser uh so you can see it a little bigger yeah basically look like this there's going to be your assets your bower assets and public are all you have to worry about node modules and bower components node and Bower deal with those. So you don't need to worry about those two. In fact, when you first download the project, uh, you're not even gonna see those folders yet. You have to build them yourself. Uh, public is what gets published out to the web. You see there's an index file you'll edit here directly and most other things you won't. It has a folder for your fonts and your data. Your data is where you'll put your, your geography topo JSON. It uses topo JSON now in this version. And in your assets is where you'll do most of your work. It has your scripts, uh, JavaScript, some stuff. And anytime you see a, a folder called vendor, it's some stuff that I couldn't manage with Bower. So it's just vendor scripts. You won't really edit those directly. Your, uh, I'm using less for CSS uh, pre-processing. You can use SAS or Stylus or whatever floats your boat. Main.less is your main file I need to worry about. These are the only two files I monkey about with, except under vendor, under the bootstrap less file, I comment out a bunch of stuff I don't need. Images has your source stuff like your, your uh, GIMP file or your Inkscape file. And build... All these images you put in here when you build the project will get image minned over into the images folder on the public public folder. So they'll all be compressed and ready to go for the web. Data, you'll have your metric information and this is all in CSV and your meta information, which is all in Markdown. And one of the biggest differences on the back end with the new version is how it handles all the data. In the first version, there was one giant GeoJSON file with all of the data just smacked right onto it. And that was a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea because, well, hello, now we've got a new year of data. Where do I put all this stuff? Now I have a time element to it. It's a bad idea because it makes it really hard for other organizations to customize makes it hard for whatever people you have providing the data to give you the data in a useful way. Uh, it, and uh, when people have to load that huge file on page load, it really slows things down and they probably don't even care about uh, 
you know, 80% of those metrics. Now having them as a CSV file, it's very quick and easy to do, to load up, to get everything you need running, and uh, you'll be in for happy times. So, the other difference is now I'm using Topo JSON for the geometry. The geometry now stores is the geometry and the ID, and that's it. So, let's get cracking here. Enough chatter. First thing you need to going to do for your setup is install Node.js. If you are on, uh, say on Linux, it's going to be in your it's going to be in your repos, whatever distro you're using. If you're on Windows, download the installer and click Next about 87 times. If you're on a Mac, it probably just involves going to a coffee shop. But anyway, Node.js is very easy to set up. Once you get that set up you'll need to install the global dependencies. And that's what this line is right here. You're doing like uh, npm install dash g for global. Gulp, we're using Gulp for our task runner. Uh, Gulp, it's kind of like Grunt. I like it a little better because it's a little faster. Instead of a giant a JSON config file that Grunt uses, which I find hard to deal with, just uses regular JavaScript functions, which I find easier to deal with. We're going to uh, globally install Topo JSON because that's what we're going to use to convert our shapefile or whatever into Topo JSON. And Bower is like a dependency manager for web developers. It installs all your JavaScript libraries and manages them like. D3 and jQuery and, and all that happy stuff. I've already run that, so I'm not going to make you watch me do that. Once you have run that, it is time to grab the project. And you can either grab the zip file for it, or you can clone it from GitHub. I'm just going to clone it. Oh, uh, you hit enter on me. I didn't quite want to enter. Let's call it, ah, I named it whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Let's see. We will call it dash demo. Thank you GitHub for not being down at this moment in time. We'll cd into dash demo and we're going to check out the dev branch because that's where all the fun is happening right now. So now we're on the dev branch, you'll see we have that same layout. We need to now install our, uh, our node and our Bower dependencies. So we'll go npm install, and there is a uh, couple files in here that just tell npm what this project needs and tells Bower what this project needs. npm install, and while it runs that, let's take a look at what I'm going to be faking in today. Uh, basically, I just built a hex bin based on the boundary of a uh, a county in Florida somewhere. I can't remember where it was. What you want to do is make sure you have a field that is your ID. And here I just had a field called my ID. You're going to want to remember the name this was called, N Hoods, because that's what it's going to be. The feature type is going to be called in TopoJSON. You're going to want to remember what the latitude, longitude, middle of this neighborhood layer is, so that way you can have the map go straight there when the site loads. Our node stuff is installed. Now we're going to go Bower install. That's going to get our Bower dependencies. And off it'll run. And now we're going to type gulp in it. What this is doing, I have a tiny init function in the gulp, gulp file. Uh, the search that Mecklenburg uses has a whole bunch of our web services in it for addresses and parks and businesses and all kinds of crap that you're probably not going to have. So what I did is I made a basic search file that uh, just searches for the neighborhood ID in the search box. 
since you're not going to have all these functions, what it's going to do is it's going to move that the search file from Mecklenburg into something called search.advanced. That way you can see how all that works and take the simple search and just name it search.js. And that's what init is doing there. See, it's renaming search file. Now you actually have a fully functioning site. You can just type gulp. The default process is your uh, development process. And off it's going to go. And gulp comes with, or I, I provide with as part of the dependencies, a web server with live reload. So now you've got uh, a fully functioning site running on localhost 8000 doing all of your things. Neato stuff. You can show the data and you know how everything is linked together. All this happy stuff. You are actually up and running right now. Eleven listeners added. It's probably got an old process running on that same port still listening to stuff. Let's see if it's working. We'll go into an editor. Let me open that folder. Workspace dash demo. Okay. Ah, hello. Well, that didn't get very much smaller. Ah. Ah, ah. Get smaller. Okay. It's got a live re reload going. So if you go into your assets and you're less and you decide to monkey around with something, like let's change the body color to... Uh, well, it's got an image there. Let's change, let's just add another line to overwrite the first one. Background red. <laughs> See if that does anything. See, it automatically reloads your browser window for you. So it's live reload all set up for you. You don't need a browser extension for it. Good to go. Your development environment is all set up and running. So, what was next? I can't even remember. We fired it up. Now, build for deployment. We don't really need to do that yet. Customizing the dashboard for your data. Here's the fun part. Here's how the data is related in the dashboard. You have your geography topo JSON layer that just has an ID in it. The ID relates to an ID column in the CSV file. Uh, and let me show you what the CSV files look like. Gee, where in the, I got a folder over here somewhere. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Pull us up in the good old Libre office. You see, what, what you'll have in your CSV is an ID column Pro tip, when you populate these things, sort by your ID column. That way, if you want to add more data later, you just sort it when you do your select query in your database, whatever, and you can just paste it right in. ID column, and each year you have data for, it's lowercase y underscore and then that year. So that's what that looks like. So this is a metric. If you have null values, If you have null values, just leave them empty. So in the CSV, it's actually going to look like 5, comma, comma. And it's just going to be nothing in between those commas. So just leave it empty for null values. So your geography ID relates to the ID in that metric. The name of the metric file, like M1, relates to the metadata for that metric. So it would be like M1.md for markdown. That's how that data is uh, does its thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our fake metrics and our we're going to convert our shape file into topo JSON, and then we will have our own local data. 
Then we're going to customize this config.js, which has a lot of knobs you can turn to get it to work for our area. So let's get busy. Let's get cracking. We're going to pop out a gulp here and go back. And we've got this N hoods layer. We are going to convert it to topo JSON. Bada bang. And we call this N hoods. And our property ID field was my ID. And we're going to leave it called geography.topo.json. I'm running some simplification routines on this, uh, which it actually isn't going to do a whole lot for a, a hex bin like this, but there's a lot of knobs you can tweak in the topo.json command to get it the way you want. I would simplify your uh, polygons as much as you can and it's still tolerable for you. That reduces the size and a uh, smaller size across the web is a good thing. Off it goes. Now we have this geography.topo.json. Our polygons are 42 kilobytes. It's actually smaller than what our shapefile was. We're going to take that. We're going to go into our copy of the dashboard, public data, and we're going to paste it over our old geography. Now we're going to clear our our old metrics and meta. And we're not going to need these. We're going to go into our assets, into our data, and we're going to clear out all the source metrics here. And we're going to leave three metadata files for our three fakey metrics because metadata is kind of hard. I'll explain that more when we get there. So now let's go back into our metrics and we are going to paste in uh, our three fakie metrics. So now in our assets we have three metrics and three metas and our geography. Let's go to Customizing config.js. So let's go to assets, scripts, config.js. This is pretty well documented in here what you need to do for each step, and there's not a whole lot you have to do. First, we want to put in our base tiles. Uh, the base tiles it comes with are from Mecklenburg. Uh, I don't build tiles for the world because I have things to do. There's a link here to a lot of different leaflet providers for base tiles. We're just going to go with uh, uh, OpenStreetMap tiles for now. Our geography. We need to, when we remember the center of our uh, uh, new neighborhoods, this is going to tell leaflet to center up where we want to go. Let's go negative 81.615. Not double negative, which is actually okay in math, but apparently not okay in language. Go figure that out. Neighborhoods. Now remember, this was called N hoods from what we converted it from. Our overlay interstates, we don't have an overlay. You can add additional features to your topo JSON file and style them. We didn't do that here. Color breaks, we'll leave it at six. What this section does is essentially formats your numbers for presentation. So if you have metrics that are a percentage or money or a year, in other words, you don't want a comma in it, you can do that. We'll just say M1 was a, we'll say that was a percentage. I think that was percentage looking. We'll say M2 was money. And we just will say we don't have any years, so M3 is just going to register as a, a regular number. Now, this is for crazy people, this last part. Um, basically, if you pull in raw data or accuracy data from like the ACS, you can show that along with your metrics. If you have accuracy data for like M1.csv, you would name it M1-accuracy.csv and put it in that same data folder. 
uh, raw data, if say M1, your M1 metric is the raw data for your M8, you would put that relationship here. And, that's, and that information would appear in a, a hidden area with a table. I'll show you in just a minute. We're gonna leave those blank because we don't have crazy people. We have just customized our config.js. Now let's run our, oh, one more thing. Let's see. In our index.html file in public, what controls the metrics you see is this giant uh, select group. And there's option groups. You can have different option groups. We are going to clear out almost all of this stuff, I think. Uh, we'll keep one more option group. And we will clear out all the rest of these metrics that we don't have or need. So now what you do is if your metric was called say M1, you would give M1 and what you want to call it here, my percentage stuff. And we'll say M2 was money, money. And we're putting that in the character option group for no particular reason. And then we'll say M3 is in a different option group and economics. And we'll call this, uh, I don't know, number of pools. Who knows? Who knows? Does anyone really know what any of this stuff is? I don't think so. So we'll save that. And now we'll go over and build our project. Building the project will take our metadata files and our CSV files and convert them to HTML and Markdown. So we'll go gulp build. Among other things, it's going to, oops, I need to go back to dash demo. It's going to minimize our images, process our less, uglify our JavaScript, all that happy stuff. Do some cache busting. So now, let's see, close this out. No. Ah. What in the world am I doing? Okay, now we'll go gulp and relaunch. And with any luck, look, it's zoomed in to where our new neighborhood is. Uh, we see it's identifying all our stuff. Here's our percentage stuff. We can select things. We can switch to money, money. And you'll see, since we had some nulls all in a row, these polygons are not filled in anymore and it doesn't list a value. And you see the unit, and this was dollars. And the number of pools is just a straight number. And you'll see too, our percentage stuff, I think I had, I had two years there. So you notice the slider has two years in it. Money stuff, I had three years in it. And it automatically does that. Number of pools, there was only one year. So it hides the trend chart and that time slider because there's nothing worse than a control you can't use. Now let's try finding a neighborhood. And there's our, our neighborhood, neighborhood 44. It's NPA 44 here. You might want to fudge in the, with what you're calling your stuff because no one else in the world probably uses that term. I should probably have something where you can customize that. And if you zoom in pretty tight, the polygons will become semi-transparent and it will start fetching tiles for you. Apparently there's not a whole lot in this region in OpenStreetMap. Uh, I apparently picked a not very popular county in Florida, but you can see them. There's the Kissimmee River back there. And you can change in that config file.
the zoom level at which the base tiles are visible. Right now I have it set at 15. Now the metadata we didn't monkey with. The metadata is a little bit hard. Let me show you what a metadata file looks like. We'll go into assets, data, meta, M1. Metadata markdown file looks like this. There's a title and a subtitle, why it's important about the data, and additional resources. And this is markdown. If you're familiar with markdown, nothing here is, surprises you. This is a markdown unordered list. Here's the thing. Because it is showing that in these three columns, once it converts to HTML, I'm essentially doing some kind of lefty-righty processing, like you get the first, uh, the end of the first H2 and the beginning of the first H3 and get what's in between that and throw it in this one thing. So that's kind of ugly. If you, if you have your markdown, your meta formatted just like this, you're fine. If you want to change that, uh, if you want to change that, it talks about it in the meta, there's this scripts functions metadata.js, and it's a fairly small file. Uh, burp, burp. And it's just basically doing some substring index, you know, get left and right here and drop it over in these other places. And you can fiddle with that. But if you change the markdown format and don't change this JavaScript, you're not going to get any metadata, and that's a sad day for you. But that's it. We just took our uh, whole, I tell you what, let's just change the title to my dashboard. And that's the meta title. The actual title is uh, down here. And save that. And since we're still running our gulp process, gulp dev process, you see it's automatically changed in the page. You've just taken the new dashboard and customized it to your location. It should be very simple and straightforward now. And it's still in development. It's in beta. So there's a lot of code cleanup to do. There's still a lot of sawdust. But uh, all the things you do to customize it are pretty set in stone and aren't going to change. So... I hope you found that useful, and if you tried customizing the last version of it, uh, uh, let me go ahead and apologize for the horrible, horrible things I did to you there. This new version, much easier. See, we just took our stuff and did it straight away. So, that's it. Uh, have fun with it, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.